Hey, good morning, everybody. Lorianne here once again for day five, but this time it, this is the Ask Me Anything. So I am just going to share this before I start rambling on too, too much. Let's see. Hmm. Entrepreneurs making an impact. Um, and where is the she built this? There we go. All right. Hopefully that is in both of those places. Uh, let's just double check. How is everybody today on this lovely Friday? Oh, I don't know if it went over there. Um, I don't know, Tony, can you try sharing it into entrepreneurs? Yes. I just don't see it in there. Uh, there it is. I do see it. So today is our live Q&A call, and you can ask LA anything. Um, and I got some people who submitted some questions, but if you are joining, um, please feel free to say hi and type in your questions, and I am happy to answer them. So this is day five. This has um, been a whole week of master your sales, you know, tidy up your business over in the She Built This um, Facebook group. And, you know, Monday, you know, like Monday through Thursday, I gave you like some specific action steps to take to tidy up your sales. Because without sales, you know, I'm sorry, ladies, but we are not going to be in business. <laughs> Um, and as much as you can say, I don't like sales, it feels icky, there's a way to make it feel more authentic to your personality and feel good and make bank, right? So that then we can stay in business and sign the front side of a check as opposed to signing the back side of a check. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lori Mirabito. I'm a business coach working in this online space, helping women to either start their business or take their businesses to the next level. And I have a professional speaking background and with my professional speaking, I mean that, that in itself was a business and that, and I use all of that experience moving for helping my clients. I've also got clients who are writing books and we work on becoming number best selling, number one best selling authors. So let's kind of get started. I'll kind of give you a recap. Monday, day one, we talked about uncovering your beliefs around selling because typically when you dislike selling, there's some sort of experience or reason why you dislike selling, why it feels icky. But I know everybody out there, and I run my clients, my private clients through this also, you've had some bad experiences buying things, but you've also had a lot of really great experiences buying things. And it's to really tap into both of those. And I will tap, type down in there, um, if you didn't get a copy of the workbook, you definitely want a copy of the workbook because I walk you through all of these steps. So let me just kind of type that in. And I think I typed that right. So to speak and stand out.com forward slash sales training. So money was all about un uncovering those beliefs because without uncovering those beliefs and, and deciding what new belief you want to have, you can't move forward. There's just like, like the, the, you, ju you just won't. You'll constantly show up to sales calls. You'll constantly, when you're trying to explain your, your services or your products to people, you will just fumble. You'll just be like, well, I kind of um, have this um, product or service that you maybe, maybe not be interested in. And so you just don't show up and other people feel that vibe. And it's like, you don't feel, they can sense that you don't feel confident in this. So why would they hire you? Buyers like to hire experts. So that was day one. Day two was about figuring out where you are. And this was, this was a short video because I kind of guided you through, here's some of the numbers that you need to go look for. Let's uncover, let's see where we are in order to make that goal 
be able to like, this is the income goal that I want. This is the goal that I want to have. How many sales calls I want to have each week, each month. This is how many, like the different products that I want to promote. Being able to put that down so that you can set your goals so that that helped you on the third day, which was all about planning. And yesterday was all about sales calls. <laughs> and I hope you got a ton of value out. I got some great comments about what they took away from it, but you know, tap, I mean, type down in the comments. I'd love to know some of your takeaways from this week, whether it's just today or maybe it was you've watched a couple of the other previous ones. So I'm just going to like refer to here to my iPad here because I got some people who submitted some questions because they knew that they weren't going to be here live. So first question was, how do you promote your product or service with others? without others feeling you're trying to sell them something. And I want to go back to the mindset. You know, that's about how you are showing up. In yesterday's um, training about the sales calls, I sort of emphasized about having some sort of a routine, something that you do beforehand. Maybe you need to start journaling beforehand. Maybe you just need to you know, recite and dance around the house and they like, you know, get all like energetic. Maybe there's some songs that you really want to listen to. Something like that gets you into that performance right then and there so that you show up and do your best. Because how do you promote your products without feeling like you're trying to, without others trying to feel like you're selling them something? If, let's all remember that everybody's like, you're probably talking to adults and it's okay for them, they, they're adults. We have to remember that they have a decision. They can either say yes or they can say no. And you're just sharing your offerings. So let's work on, so I, so for this, this question, I would say you like work on your mindset and showing up in your, in the best, the best form of you, like that peak performance so that you can, so that your energy comes across and you're not feeling like, I feel like I'm selling something to them. Because apparently, um, the person who wrote this question, you're probably feeling a little icky about it. So work on your mindset. Uh, another question. I'm just starting out and I don't have a large network. What should I do? Get out there. Get out there and meet people. You know, if you're an online business, once you join some groups that have your ideal clients, and when I say join groups, here's what I don't want you to do. And this is what I recommend to all of my private clients. You don't want to get into these groups and just start, um, here's my offer, here's my offer, here's my offer. No. Go in there like as if you were going to a party, as if you were going to someone's backyard barbecue. You wouldn't go in there and walk in and say, hey, everybody, here I am. No, you would get in there and just like, hi, I'm such and such, you know, nice to meet you. You know, how do you know the hosts? You know, especially if you don't know anybody. So go into those groups and just start getting to know people. And then from there, you can start posting some of your high value information. And then you start making offers. Then you start having like, hey, initiate like some of those conversations, you know, with people like, hey, I think I have something that might help you out with this problem that you have. Let's you know, take it all over to DM, you know, have a conversation there, jump on a call, offer the call, but you need to just get out there. So try to be the, you know, the little, you know, networking, you know, whether, and that's just online. You can also do the same thing on Instagram and on LinkedIn, depending on who your ideal client is. And if you are more of an in-person and also, or, or you could just be doing both, Find some networking groups to go to. Find some events. Another great idea is charity events. A lot of charity events have lots of different, lots of different ideal clients, lots of different types of people, but that's a great way to get to know people and just get your name out there. So that's what I would do if I was just starting out. Um, another question. From day one, it's hard for me to get over feeling pushy when I'm selling or talking about my services. And again, I'm gonna go back to like, this is, um, I'm feeling, for me to get over feeling pushy when I'm selling or talking about my services. Again, this comes back to mindset. 
how are you showing up? Because if you've got this belief, and I sort of shared this um, actually like throughout, um, definitely Monday and also on the sales call training, if you've got this belief um, that you're feeling pushy, then your whole body shows up as feeling pushy. The way that you talk, your energy, the way that like that, you know, like body language, you feel like you're being pushy. So you're probably not showing up. I keep using that word showing up as like the real you being of service. So instead of, instead of saying to yourself, I'm feeling pushy or now I don't want to feel pushy. I don't want to feel pushy. Why don't you show up and say, I want to be of service to this person. I want to be of service to this audience. How would that, how would you show up if you were showing up of service? Now, if I was showing up on these lives, feeling like I was being pushy, then I probably like, um, they'd probably be shorter. Definitely, definitely with it, these trainings would be shorter. Um, they'd be short and sweet to the point. If you looked at the workbook, um, you wouldn't have seen that kind of a workbook. I mean, the workbook is 17 pages long. And it's, you know, and the reason why it's 70 pages long is because I want it to be of service to you. I want it to give you value. You know, this has, you know, been a wonderful free training. I've so, I've had so much fun doing this all week. Even though I've been, if you've been following me, I've been in like three different locations this week. <laughs> and it's been kind of fun. So the other thing that I would suggest that you do also is journal about it. If you're not big into journaling, um, sorry, but like that's, I love journaling. I neurologically, you know, remember I'm a sort of like a brain geek, but neurologically I love to write. There's something very magical that happens when you actually put pen to paper. Or in my case, these days, um, my Apple pencil to my iPad. Uh, another question. And if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. Let's, let me just take like a breather here just to say hello to Talene. She says, great example. So make the connection first, then share versus launching into your offering without knowing them. Absolutely. I mean, think about how we all like to be sold to or to buy or to be influenced. You know, influence is another word for sales. I also think solution, you know, like it's not about sales, it's about solutions for people. And that's what our jobs are, is to offer solutions to others. But yeah, think about, oh, here's a great example. So years ago, uh, when I was going, I was uh, professionally speaking, had written, I think I had written my first book, had, had gone to a networking event and there was a woman who was in real estate. And I remember her walking around the room and all the different people, there's probably at least a hundred people at this event. She was literally passing out her business card. Not even a hi, how are you? It was just like, hey, here's my card. Here's my card. Not even asking for anybody else's card. And that's what she did. And, and then she would just, she walked away. And the people that I was with, who we were all trying to like get to know each other, are just like, uh, wow. And you could just see people in the group just ripping up her card or just, you know, like throwing it on the table. She lost a lot of business cards that, that day and she lost an opportunity to get to know people. Instead of trying to meet all 100 people, you know, because that's what her goal was, was to meet all 100 people somehow. She could have just had like five amazing conversations with people and walked away with five new friends who would refer her to other people. But instead, she just like, you know, divvied out her card. So don't, please don't do that. Next question is, do you help people who are just starting out or who have established businesses? Oh, fabulous question. And both. I do help people who have established businesses, but I also help people who are just starting out, whether it's in this online space or maybe you've got like some sort of a brick and mortar type business. You know, it's yes, I this is this is my this is my jam. This is where I like shine. And if you want some more information, feel free. Let me put the that is the link to book a call with me. And I'll be sure let me I'll even throw it right in here. Okay. 
Can you guys hear me typing? And that will take you to a page where you can book a call with me. Um, let's have a conversation. What I do is, you know, I'm not pushy at all. But if you're super interested and wondering, like, what's it like to work with Lorian, especially after, like, all the training that we just did here, maybe you're like, I really want some help on my sales. I really want my help. I want more help in growing my business. And sometimes having that accountability person, you know, me as, you know, hiring me as, as your business coach to help you because I really got that overview of your business. My private clients will tell you this all the time. Sometimes they're just like, they're down in working in their business. And then there's me and it's like, I can like see where you are and I know where you wanna go. And that's like, I help you get there instead of getting stuck in things and calling you out on stuff. Like if you're, if I see that you're procrastinating, but anyways, definitely like book a call with me and we will discuss your business, your goals, and I will share with you how I support clients. Let's see. Sarah Ross is just joining us. Sarah says, I had a conversation with an old boss yesterday. Congratulations. I know that was something that we were, you mentioned earlier. And she gave me some amazing leads and is introducing me to three people who I must speak to, her words, not mine. Oh, congratulations. I am super proud of you for that one. Just having those conversations with people. Um, we all have a warm market. And sometimes it's time to like, let's reach, out, let's reach back out to people. In the speaking world, when I was, you know, when my business was predominantly speaking, you know, I would reach out to pe meeting planners to organizations, to companies who like, hey, it's been, I can't believe it's been two years since I spoke for you. You know, a lot has happened and like, let's, let's just reconnect. I'd love to hear what's going on with you. Just to have those reconnecting conversations. So that's sort of like my part of um, this, the template that I give my clients about how to reignite those relationships because you'll be amazed at how many times like people will rebook you, they will rehire you, whether that's for speaking, whether it's for coaching, for your consulting, because they've always got like new things that are coming in. So don't be afraid to ask. And in Sarah's case, you know, she probably, um, you can tell me, Sarah, if this is true. I mean, did you ask? Like, who else should I speak to? you know, regarding what I'm doing. Like, who would you recommend that I talk to? And you're just making the ask. That's not being pushy. We have, like we as women, I really feel like we are afraid of selling and we need to stop being so afraid of making the ask. Sarah says, um, oh, book a call with LA. She's amazing. I love working with her. My business has moved on so much since we started working together. And I adore working with you too. <laughs> you were doing some amazing, amazing, amazing things. Um, let's see. So thank you very much for that. Let's see. I've got one more question. And if anybody else who's watching, if you have a question, whether you're watching the replay or you're watching us live, you can feel free to type in your question because I will come back later and make sure that I answer any of your questions. This is the Ask Me Anything show. Let's see. Last question was um, that I have is, what do I do after I hear no? I find it hard. I, I find it hard to get over, to get over hearing no. And again, this all comes back to like how we're interpreting, you know, this. Um, a no, you know, a no is not bad. A no is like, it could mean I don't have enough information. It might mean, you know, like I've got some stuff that's going on in my life right now. Don't take it personal. So they said, no, that's, you know, like move on to the next person. They're not like, maybe you just need to give them more value. Not everybody's going to say yes right away. They need to maybe build a little more know, like, and trust because you never know. And this has happened to me a number of times where I've made the offer and people have said, no, not really. But then a couple of months later, they're sending a, me a message on Messenger or sending me an email saying, I want to hire you. So that can happen. And that doesn't happen just because I made the ask and then I disappeared because I was like, because one person said no to me. That's like, no, 
I am here to serve and I have a bigger purpose and that's what you have to keep in mind. You have a bigger purpose, you, have a, you are serving, you have a solution, you are serving an audience and just because one person in that audience says no, you're going to quit. You know, this sort of reminds me of the, um, uh, the Legally Blonde um, movie where she was ready to quit law school because somebody did something to her or and she was and remember she was in the nail salon and there was one of the professors who came over to her and said you know you're not half the, if you quit because of a man because of like a no then you are not half the woman i thought you were that's just like what suddenly is like coming coming to mind with me um so don't let that one person bother you change your perspective about it you know, if you knew, there's like this old saying, if you knew you had to hear 10, 10 no's before you heard a yes, would you like be like, okay, that's one down. I only need nine more. That's a different perspective. And maybe look at it as, huh, because I, when I was doing executive coaching, I always would tell my clients, you have to look back in order to move forward at, you know, to be able to take some giant steps forward. Think about like, how did that meeting go? How did that project go? What would I do different if we were to do it over again? So think about like the ask leading up to it, the before, during, you know, and the after, the no. What would you do differently? Because maybe it's time to just like reevaluate it and tweak it a little bit. You know, were you paying attention to their body language? Did you ask them, do you have any questions? Were you kind of like using their words? That's important to use their words, you know, that to build that rapport with people. You know, there's so much that goes on with sales. And, you know, this was just, this has just been like an overview. But if you want to talk more, the person who, you know, sent me this question, or maybe you feel the same way, feel free to book a call with me and we'll talk about your sales process and maybe how we can customize your sales process so that it feels good. It doesn't feel icky. It feels more like you and you get more yeses and hell yeses than you do noes and crickets. So if there are any other questions, um, this has been a great week. I've had a lot of fun doing this and uh let me know before down below like give me like some sort of an emoji like hey yes Lorraine, i want to do i want to have more free trainings with you like this i'm going to be going back to my facebook lives and i'm considering i'll just like put this out there right now i'm considering doing a podcast how do you guys feel about you know a podcast something that's weekly from me um they wouldn't be super long because I'm just thinking about the way that I listen to podcasts. I love like those under 30 minute podcasts, but who knows? Um, we can just like play around with it. Love to hear your thoughts on, on what you guys are looking for because I'm here to serve you so that you grow the business of your dreams. I want you to get visible. I want you to sell out your programs and I definitely want you to monetize your intellectual property. You guys have a great weekend. And if you have any questions, remember, I will be popping back over here to answer any of those questions. You guys all have a fabulous day.